today is Marvin Stroke from the um, OBTU, the Oak Brook Trout Unlimited Chapter. He's the education chair for the Oak Brook Trout Unlimited Chapter from Illinois. Uh, he's going to be providing an overview of their youth outreach programs, which were recently highlighted by TU's president, Chris Wood, in his 2022 accomplishments address um, as a great example of local engagement work. So really looking forward to hearing from Marvin. Good morning. And again, my name is Marvin Strauch. I'm the youth education chair with the Oak Brook chapter of Trout Unlimited. And again, uh, I guess I would say that... Um, is Monty Python's troop would say now for something completely different. Uh, we won't have any graphs, pie charts, um, uh, tables, just I guess a number of photographs of smiling kids mostly standing in streams. And uh, again, uh, we look on youth education and youth outreach as our way of furthering the mission of Trout Unlimited, protecting connecting, restoring, and sustaining our cold water resources. And our hope is that our efforts are going to provide the next generation of cold water stream stewards. So uh, a little bit about my chapter, uh, Oak Brook Trout Unlimited, uh, you know, as most of you are aware, Illinois is not a state noted for its cold water streams. Uh, uh, and so our Trout Unlimited chapters really don't grow up near a, a local watershed, but rather are clustered around the large population center of Chicago. And uh, particular to Oak Brook, uh, because we're south and west of the city, uh, it turns out that our territory boundaries take in all of the rest of the state going down to the southern border. So we currently have 1,300 members, but many of them are quite far from, uh, from our area. Um, uh, basically, our entire youth outreach effort uh, started at a very simple question back in 2004 when a member stood up at a meeting and asked why we don't do anything with kids. Uh, so we, uh, after the silence was broken at the meeting, we sat down and figured out how to start uh, a, um, a youth fly fishing program. And the initial program uh, was executed in 2005, and we based it loosely on Phil Genova's book, First Cast, uh, Teaching Kids to Fly Fish. Uh, from there, uh, basically, we uh, morphed a little bit, realizing that we had uh, quite a number of Boy Scouts interested in taking part in our program as a way of earning their fly fishing merit badge. And so we then uh, patterned our program to cover as many of those uh, requirements as possible. And so now we find ourselves uh, conducting uh, five programs a year with 16 students per class. That's primarily driven by the amount of equipment that we uh, have and also just uh, uh, manageable numbers, let's say. So in any given year, we usually have somewhere between 70 and 80 young people uh, who have taken our program and we did a little bit of a count. We figure we've hit about 850 people, uh, young people over the course of our, our program. So again, uh, a, a little bit of classroom work with uh, fly tying, knot tying, um, moving on outside to learning to fly cast and of course fishing. And in many cases, this is the first opportunity that uh, many of these young people have had to hold a fly rod, but in a, a, a lot of them, it's the first time they've actually uh, had an opportunity to fish. So from there, uh, we tried a couple of weekend uh, outings with, uh, with either scout groups or young people. Uh, those were in the Iowa Driftless area, but uh, within a few years, we uh, promoted to uh, the Illinois Council the idea of conducting a uh, a camp. And that led to the formation in 2008 of the first Illinois TU Youth Conservation and Fly Fishing Camp. Uh, we run this every year, except for the two years tied up with COVID, uh, on the Osable River. And uh, it's been a very successful camp and again, continuing on to this day. Um, 
as far as other uh, youth outreach, I would say the uh, largest effort that we have right now is Trout in the Classroom. And uh, Trout in the Classroom, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, it's it's a, uh, let's say, a, a cooperative venture between the uh, Illinois Department of Natural Resources, Trout Unlimited, and individual teachers. And so we found, as we investigated, that uh, uh, Trout Unlimited National provides just a huge amount of resources available to people interested in starting a program. We found the Illinois Department of Natural Resources a very willing partner to participate. They permit the schools, they provide our trout eggs, they determine our release sites. TU volunteers, uh, you know, uh, assist the teachers with uh, uh, setting up their aquarium equipment, uh, maintaining uh, the aquarium in operating order, answering questions, uh, and also we're a primary funding source for these schools because, of course, an aquarium setup currently runs about $1,500 uh, to start. Uh, teachers, the, one of the nice features of Trout in the Classroom is that teachers individually determine how they fit this program into their own uh, curriculum. I, I see I've got a typo there. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we began our program in 2008, the 2008-2009 school year. Uh, that began the first school in Illinois to receive their uh, eggs from uh, from the uh, IDNR was St. Patricia School in Hickory Hills. Uh, now there are 29 functioning programs in Illinois, and I'm proud to say that uh, Oak Brook Chapter uh, is uh, sponsoring 16 of those programs, and our board has committed uh, the funds so that we can add one new program at least every year. Uh, you know, so that we can fund the uh, purchase of an aquarium set up for one new school every year. Um, following a few pictures of the activities that we can provide, obviously, aside from helping with the aquarium, we try to visit our schools periodically over the course of the year, and we bring some programs. Uh, I don't know if any of you recognize this gentleman, but this is Dean Hansen. Uh, an entomologist from Stillwater, Minnesota. And uh, we had encountered uh, Dean uh, uh, in years past at one of the fly fishing shows. And he has a marvelous live specimen uh, aquatic insect presentation. And we bring him to Chicago for a week every spring. And we visit up to about 10 of our participating schools in a week's time. Uh, following are some of the uh, activities that the kids are able to do during their stream release, including, again, uh, a little macro invertebrate survey, uh, water quality testing, and then ultimately releasing their fish into the creek. So our most recent of our programs just kicked off last year. It's Stream Girls. And Stream Girls is a cooperative program between Trout Unlimited and Girl Scouts. Uh, the stream of Stream Girls is science, technology, engineering, math, uh, but adding to it recreation and art. And the idea is to allow uh, uh, Girl Scouts uh, to uh, encounter a stream, uh, uh, walk the stream, wade the stream, measure it, have some activities and sit down, discuss, write, draw, uh, reflect on what they're learning. And uh, so we, we looked at this program. Initially, we were apprehensive because uh, we envisioned the program more as a weekend activity and on a trout stream. And so uh, it looked like it may have a lot of uh, travel and complication to it. But when we uh, considered, actually, we saw a program functioning in Wisconsin that was a one-day program uh, at, uh, I think, the West Fork Sportsman's Club, and we recognized that we could do this as a one-day program and that it didn't necessarily have to be on a trout stream. We were able to move forward. Uh, we began the planning 
in 2019. We executed two programs last year. Uh, I'm proud to say that this year, we should be able to have our entire program staff, uh, all uh, women members of Oak Brook Trout Unlimited. And I think this is a, a great step forward to be able to have women teaching girls. So uh, among the activities that take place in Stream Girls is uh, one called Go With The Flow, which is measuring a cross section of the river and then uh, floating a series of ping pong balls down the river to, um, to measure the stream flow. And also in watching those ping pong balls flowing to discuss currents, uh, what obstructions in the stream do to the flow, where fish may live, uh, observing the different uh, types of water in the stream, the pools, uh, the riffles, so on. Uh, the girls, of course, do a little uh, macro invertebrate survey in the creek. And then we do some fly tying. We teach them uh, to cast, and there's a fishing component. But uh, it's this is more of, uh, as opposed to a hardcore uh, teaching program, it's more of an experience uh, for the participants. So what what are the commitments for a chapter looking to embark on uh, youth education programs? Well, obviously, you need a pool of engaged volunteers. You need people willing to step up to mentor, uh, to teach segments, or or just to help out with the timing and so on. You need commitment from your chapter uh, to provide the funding for any equipment that's necessary, and. You know, all of this, of course, is uh, a time demand on, on our members. Um, one of the things that I found is, is really elusive here is the question of how do you determine whether your program is successful? And uh, in this case, you know, we've, we've decided that, uh, let's say, the, the simple uh, tests. Uh, 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 participants in our program receive a free uh, uh, a free one year membership in Trout Unlimited. It would be simple to just look at how many people renew uh, those memberships and say that's your success rate. And we don't find that as a valid uh, uh, means of looking at a program. Uh, first off, uh, we're dealing with minors, and so pretty much every young person signing up to our, our one of our programs is using their parents' email address. And so that's where Trout Unlimited is going to track. And of course, that's up to the parents' determination if they want to continue that membership or not. Uh, but also, you know, we're tapping young people at a time where there's dramatic changes going on in their lives. These are either uh, for the most part, we're talking about young people uh, 11 through 18 years old. So these are kids moving through junior high, from junior high to high school, uh, graduating high school, leaving for university. Um, it, it's, it's hard to expect that uh, we can look one year to the next and determine our success. But what we can tell and what we have seen is that uh, we can see our success happening around us. First off, we have parents, teachers, scout leaders who have all on their own found our programs, uh, signed up for them without our marketing out to these people. We get constant feedback from the parents and teachers of the quality of the programs we're offering. We've also found that people from outside our region are not only inquiring about our programs, but signing up for them, especially the youth fly fishing program. Uh, we've had participants in our program from, uh, of course, from Illinois, from Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, Iowa, Colorado, California, and Virginia. Now, of course, most of these people had some other tie to the Chicago metro area, uh, but we've had people traveling a distance to take a one-day fly fishing class in the Chicago suburbs, which 
is still a, a puzzlement for us. But we also know that we're definitely reaching young people. And of course, if you've looked at any of the photographs in the preceding uh, slides, you can see that these are definitely engaged young people. So what I would point to is uh, those are, we, we kind of look at this program as more of a missionary aspect of Trout Unlimited and the idea of uh, uh, letting people know about our program and hoping that at some point in the future, it hits home, that they remember the program that they took part in as a teen or a preteen, and it starts to shape uh, their interests. Uh, what do we as a chapter benefit? Well, first off, this is community outreach. This is a way for Oak Brook Trout Unlimited to bring our message to the, to the community, uh, to voice a concern for cold water resources in an area that doesn't have uh, cold water trout streams. Uh, it's a way of engaging our own membership from those beginnings in 2004, where just a couple of people asked, why don't we do something with kids? Our education committee now has over 50 volunteers who will participate to one level or another in one or another or, or multiple of our programs. And then, of course, we're hopefully fostering our next generation of stream stewards. So uh, we hope that what we're doing is creating positive memories and experiences for these young people and having them look on uh, our shared concern for preserving cold water resources. Uh, that's my presentation and I welcome any questions. Oh, somebody asked about whether or not you're teaching worm fishing or I guess bait generally. Uh, uh, no. Heard of it? No. Uh, nope. The simple answer is no, not, not that we have anything against it, but uh, it's just not, uh, uh, just not part of our program right now. Um, and, and I would also say that there are other groups that are already covering that space so that we don't need to. I had a question about what is a good age to start kids in fly fishing? Well, I, I can help there. We found that, um, uh, I, you know, of course, ev everything varies, but we've, we've set 11 years old at uh, the lowest age for our youth fly fishing program. And we approach that from, from two ends. One is uh, a lot of kids younger than 11 years old may not have uh, the strength, let's say the strength coordination and ability to put together uh, understanding the fly cast. I know that there's a lot of young kids who can do it, uh, but uh, part of it also is below 11 years old. We also find that uh, kids don't have the attention span to sit through some of the programs. No. We Our sweet spot is pretty much, uh, let's say, 12 to 14 years old. That's good to know. I I have an 11-year-old. I would vouch for that, <laughs> that coordination and, yes. and attention. <laughs> yes. That's kind of Absolutely. a good one. It's a key part. I really appreciate the presentation, Marvin, and I, I hope it's it's inspiring to me. I hope it has inspired some of the other uh, participants on this call to think about youth education programs. Thank you very much. Thank you.